Okay, so here we are working through the uh, 2021 uh, BCAR um, physics exam. All right, so um, here's the instructions. They're there. One thing that said up here in this first one, what you're allowed to bring a ruler. I'll certainly bring a ruler and if possible, a clear one that you can see through because you will more than likely have to put a line of best fit in to some data. Um, so make sure that, all right, that's about all I'm going to point out to in that. All right, so we are section A we're looking at here, so multiple choice. So response that is correct or best answers. All right, so if you think, oh, these none of them are that I like for the bet, but then choose the one that's the best of those. Um, these next two kind of go together. Correct answer score one, incorrect score zero. Marks will not be deducted for incorrect. So what that means is that a blank one you get zero and then incorrect you get zero. So it's the same thing. So if worst comes to worst, eliminate some stuff and then make a choice from that. All right, uh, G is 9.8. All right, so question one, let's have a look at question one. Our aim of darts is to hit the bullseye in the center of the dartboard. We've got four players and these are their results. <clears throat> All right, which one of the players produced a set of um, Attempts that could be described as being precise but inaccurate. So for precise, they'd be close to each other. All right, so when you look at that from just what we see here, A and D have got them close to each other. Um, Inaccurate though would be away from um, bullseye in this case. All right, so A is close to the bullseye. We want inaccurate, so we want away from the bullseye. And so D, player D, is the one that we are looking for. All right, so you need to know what those particular terms, what they actually mean. So size is close to each other. Inaccurate means it's away from ideally what you're after. In this case, the bullseye. All right, question two. The diagram below shows the electric field lines between four charged spheres P, Q, R and S. And the magnitude of the charge is the same. And so what we're wanting to do is find out what's what. So what you need to, these are field lines. I think that's what it says there. Field lines, electric field. So you're gonna know what they do. So field lines, you want out of positive and in to negative. So here they're going out of P, so that's positive, coming into Q, so that's negative. They're going out of R, so that's positive, and they're going into S, so that's negative. So P is positive, so that's down, down to B or D. Q is negative, and so when you look at that, um, that cuts out now. So the only one that's now left is B. So there's B is our answer. All right, <clears throat> now we move on to question three. We've now got parallel metal plates. <clears throat> All right, so parallel metal plates 
uh, opposite charges on each plate, difference between the plate. So the which one shows the graph of the electric field? So electric field is V on D, voltage on D. And the other thing you need to know between parallel plates, the electric field is constant. between plates. All right, and that's the situation we have here, is parallel plates. Uh, well, yeah, I should really say, you know, parallel plates. So it's constant between parallel plates. So we'll have a look at these four graphs that we've got. And uh, the only one that shows a constant electric field is A. All the other electric fields are um, vary between points X, Y, and Z. <clears throat> They're different. All right. So there's that one. All right. Question four. The planet. Whoops. The planet Phobatar has a mass four times the Earth acceleration due to the gravity on the surface of Phobatar is uh, 18. If the Earth has a radius of R, which one's closest to the radius of Phobatar? All right, so there's a, a bunch of different ways that you could um, do this. Um, <clears throat> so look at the examiner's report as well as others. So G is big G, big M on R squared. All right. And so for Earth, 9.8 is big G, mass of the Earth on the radius of the Earth squared. And for Phobatar, 18, is equal to G. Now, the mass of Phobatar, we're told, is four times that of Earth. So four times the mass of the Earth over the radius of Phobatar squared. All right. And so the common thing between these two is the mass of the Earth. Well, G and the mass of the Earth. So if I 9.8 radius of the Earth squared equals G mass of the Earth. If I rearrange here, 18 radius of Phobatar squared on four is G mass of the Earth. So what we end up getting here <coughs> is that um, the radius of, so 9.8 times the radius of the Earth is equal to squared, I should say, radius of Phobatar squared on 4. And then we can rearrange that, so 9.8 times 4 on 18 radius of the Earth squared equals the radius Phobatar squared. And then, <clears throat> so then you need to figure that out. Now, when you put this bit here in your calculator, you'll get that uh, 2.17. Lots of the radius of the Earth squared is the radius of Phobatar squared. And so now we need to square root that. So the radius of Phobatar will be the square root of 2.17 times the radius of the Earth. And uh, square root 2.17 is 1.47 radius of the Earth. So when we look at that and compare, the one that's closest to 1.47 is B, 1.5. All right, so that's how I've done it. There are, as I said, there are other ways of doing that particular question. All right, question five, and we'll make this one the last one on this uh, video for this group of questions. 
uh, more videos for others. All right, so here we've got a DC electric motor powered by a battery that's connected by a split ring commutator and rectangular coil has sides KJ and LM. Magnetic fields between the pole of the magnet is uniform and constant. All right. The switch is now closed, so this switch is closed. And the coil is stationary and in the position shown. Which one of the following statements best describes the motion when the switch is closed? All right, so let's have a look. So when the switch is closed here, we then got plus here current, conventional current goes through here. So we've got conventional current flowing that way. We have our field going north to south this way. So we then need the right hand rule where the current's going um, <clears throat> J to K, field's going north to south. So J to K, north to, where am I? J to K, north, J to K, north to south, palm pushing down. So we're pushing down, so if we're pushing down that, this um, bit here, if we're pushing down that, it's going to rotate in the direction of B. All right, and the one that says that it rotates in the direction of B is alternative C. Okay, so that's just using the right-hand rule, so to make sure you know the right hand rule um, and how to do it. All right, so that's that's it for this particular um, group of questions. Um, we'll have another video for um, the next group of multiple choice questions.